So one of my best friends has a really nice welder and he's good at it, so I paid him to build me this. This is our new solar panel test station. We can test small panels like this 50 watt rich solar panel or extremely large panels, we can test them all. And the coolest thing about this system is we can tilt it. So it can go all the way up here, which makes it useful for testing bifacial solar panels. They like this steep inclination. Or we can go all the way down here, which is great in summer months when the sun is directly overhead. So this rack is pretty cool, but how are we gonna actually test the solar panels? And as you guys know, I have a CBA4 and amplifier battery analyzer. And you can actually use this to do voltage sweeps and find the power point of solar panels. But I found it to be very slow and I could get better figures with a true MPPT. So I built this instead. We have a 200 amp hour deeply discharged lithium iron phosphate battery connected to a Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT that has a max input voltage of 100 volts. And yesterday I tested this up against the CBA4 and my results were within 0.1 watts. Also the CBA4 can only do 0.1 amp increments and it takes a long time to actually get the results from that thing. And if the irradiance changes, I can't see that. On this system, I can graph it out and see what the peak wattage is. And that's all I really care about. I don't really need to know what the power point is on the IV curve. All I care about is the maximum power that we can push from a panel. Fast forward a few hours later and the sun is directly overhead. And both of my house arrays are pulling full output. But this will only last for about 45 minutes, so let's start testing these panels. We're gonna test the output at different tilt angles and see what is ideal. So first test is at 10 degrees, and the max output is 152 watts. Now we're at 16 degrees, and we're pulling 154 watts. Now we're at 20 degrees, and the max is still 154 watts. Now we're at 25 degrees, we're still pulling 154 watts. Now we're at 30 degrees. Now we're pulling 153 watts. Now we're at 35 degrees. We're pulling 151 watts, so now it's dropping. Now we're at 40 degrees, and we're pulling 148 watts. Now we're at 45 degrees, and we're pulling 144 watts. Now let's use an online calculator to find the ideal tilt for my latitude. And the online calculator says 15 to 23 degrees for my latitude. So right now we're gonna keep it at 20 degrees. So let's start testing. The first panel is obviously the rich solar panel, 200 watts. And we're pulling a max of 157 watts which is 78.5% of its rated output, which is not that great. I actually have pulled more last year from this panel. So you guys might remember this panel. It's a 100 watt polycrystalline from Rich Solar, and I've been able to pull over 100 watts with this panel. But that was during summer because we're only pulling 88 watts. But that is 88% of its rated output, so it's actually doing better than the monocrystalline that we just tested. I don't know why, but the polycrystallines do so well in my tests over the years. They always pull nearly the full output. So we're going to have to retest this thing in summer to get the full output. But yeah, 88 watts. Now this is a 100 watt monocrystalline by Renogy. And we're pulling 84 watts, which is actually pretty good for this panel. Usually the output is much lower than the polycrystalline. Now this is a used Jinko 385 watt panel by Santan Solar. The voltage open circuit is half of what it's rated to be, so let's see how much we can produce. We're pulling 217 watts out of 385, which is 56% of its advertised output. But this is a heavily degraded used panel, but yeah, that is pretty bad considering how large it is. In my opinion, I think it's better to buy brand new panels these days because they're so cheap. But I have another used panel from Santan Solar that I think will do a lot better than this one. <clears throat> now this panel by Santan Solar is rated for 250 watts and it's only $50. So let's see how much it can produce. 230 watts. 229, 230. So, so far a used panel is doing better than everything else so far, it's crazy. Can you believe that? But I don't think that's gonna last. Now this is a special surprise, guys. We have sun power cells and this is a Renogy. For the size, I think the output might be just as good as a bifacial solar panel, but we're about to find out. Or maybe not, who knows. I've been asking them for a long time to send out this panel and I finally got it, so I'm pretty stoked. We're pulling 109 watts. 
109 watts. No way, are you kidding me? Yeah, 109 guys, that's the peak. The lowest I'm seeing is 106. Holy cow, man, that is pretty impressive. Look at how small this thing is and it's super light. Oh, we just hit 110, 110 watts. But this high output might be attributed by how cold the solar cells are. So let's let it soak in the heat for a few minutes and see if this decreases. But these are copper backed sun power cells and they are known to have really good output. So yeah, let's see what happens. And they're not getting much hotter guys. The highest I can get is 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of those used panels run at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for my tests. Yeah, we're still at 108 watts. It only dropped by one watt. Yeah guys, check it out, 108 watts. That's crazy. Now we're at 122 degrees Fahrenheit and we're still pulling 108 watts. So yeah, this is the output. That's pretty incredible. This is a nice panel. Look at how thick the rails are. You can buy other panels with sun power solar cells. You don't have to buy Renegies. But yeah, sun power solar cells are pretty incredible. Now this is a 115 watt sun power solar cell panel, but we have an additional row with three more cells. So this should theoretically pull more than the last one, but we will see. We're pulling only 103 watts. I swear flex panels are never as good. For some reason, the output is just miserable. Yeah, we're still at 102 watts. That's the max I can get. And check out how many cells there are. Seven, eight, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's four across horizontally. So this thing should push out more power. These are brand new. These have never been exposed to sunshine, but the glass one is producing more power. Now we're at 130 degrees Fahrenheit and it's producing 100 watts. And this one is open circuit, so it should be hotter, but it's only at 119 degrees Fahrenheit. So the glass panel is running cooler than the flex panel, which is not that big of a surprise considering how these are constructed. Well, that was a fun test. So this is a 410 watt bifacial ET solar panel. So first we're gonna test this panel without anything behind it, just white asphalt. Oh no. We hit the output limit of this solar charge controller. We're at 20 amps. Oh, this is a bummer. So we hit the max output of this controller when connected to a 12 volt battery, but it can be connected to a 24 volt battery. So I added a second battery and now we can get back to testing. And luckily we're still at max output for my first house's solar system. So let's get testing. And the max I'm seeing is 385 watts. It's not going any higher. Now let's add reflectors underneath this panel. This is a bifacial panel, so whatever is reflected off of the ground behind it, it can absorb in the back. We're only pulling 383 watts, really? Well, that's not very fun. It might be too hot because it's reflecting it so close. There we go, 396 watts. So the reflectors have to be a good distance away from the panel unless it will heat up and it will not have any benefit. Let's tilt this panel so maybe we can get some more convective airflow under there. There we go, that's much better. So now all the reflective material is under there and we have lots of airflow. The best I can get is 388 watts. Darn it. I was expecting the output to be quite higher actually. And it just got me thinking, I've been reading studies about these panels and they have to be in a colder working temperature for them to have really good output, especially when you are feeding photons in the back and the front. So let's spray it down with some water and see what the output raises up to. These bifacial solar panels seem ideal for cold climates or far from the equator, but out here in the desert, Man, once these solar cells hit a certain temperature, the output decreases significantly. We're not even pulling standard test condition output right now. 401 watts. That's the max I'm getting, guys. I, can't, I don't think I can get it any higher. These cells are too hot. Yeah, these are 142 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty much the maximum on the data sheets for desert environments. I don't think we'll be able to get a higher output considering those facts. And the highest output that I recorded with these on my other system is when it was a colder day and it was super sunny. So yeah, if you have snow on the ground and it's cold outside and you're far from the equator, these are ideal. But out here in the desert, man, once they heat up, the output drops. I can only get 400 watts from them. With the reflectors gone, we are pulling 393 watts. So those weren't doing anything really, only 10 watts more. Now let's flip this panel over and see how much we can collect on the backside. Ooh, look at that, 270 watts. So yeah, this is a bifacial solar panel. It does work by collecting energy in the back. 
279. All right, guys, that's the highest I'm getting. So yeah, these are ideal for cold climates, guys. I don't think these are that great in the desert. And that cell temperature was as high as the used panels, which run higher than my new panels. So yeah, very interesting. But they do have a good warranty, so I don't think you have to worry that much about the degradation. I was expecting us to get at least 100% STC output, but we did not. We almost did, but we had to cheat. We had to put water on it. Man, it was hot out there. I am super tired now, my goodness. So let's talk about these results. First, the Eclipse panel by Renogy with the sun power solar cells had the best output, but this thing is very, very expensive. If you can afford these and you are limited on roof space, such as a small van, these might be for you. But these cost a lot more than the other panels that we tested, so I don't think these will be a solution for most people watching this video. Next, the best cost per measured output was the Santan Solar 2. 250 watt panel. I don't think we're gonna find something that can beat that. For 50 bucks, you get a 250 watt panel. But the other Santan solar panel, the Jinkos, the 385 watt output, those were pretty horrific. And of the 10 panels that they sent me, seven of them were producing less than 50% of their rated output. The one in the video was one of the highest performing. We had two good panels out of 10. And the best way to test for this is the voltage open circuit. So whenever you buy used solar panels, check the voltage open circuit. Those were rated for 49 volts open circuit, but most of them were 27 volts. The best I had was 40. So the used panels can be a hit or miss and can be extremely cheap, but personally, I would still go with like a polycrystalline from Rich Solar. I was amazed that the Rich Solar monocrystallines, which did do well previously on our tests, were not that good today. So we're gonna have to retest those during summer and see how well they do. The polycrystalline from Rich Solar is still number one on my list for a new panel. Compared to others that are on Amazon, that is a really good deal. But I would not recommend the other Renogy panels. I do not like the Renogy monocrystalline panels. Those time and time again always underperform compared to the competition. But Renogy's expensive panels are incredible. I actually have their 270 watt panels and I can pull 270 watts from them. So I think those are just different. I think each panel that they sell has different cells or something. Also, sun power solar cells, buy them in the glass. I know the flex panels are nice and that company said they were gonna be really good, but time and time again, the flex panels never give me their rated output, ever. I mean, go back in my older videos and you will see how much I have complained about this problem. And the bifacial panels, as cool as they are, are not that great in the desert. I'm gonna do some more testing in the future and try to cool down the panels with different mounting options, but I think those are best suited for cold climates. The bifacials are really good though. During winter, those things are going to crank power. I actually took down my second array and I'm just powering the trailer off of bifacial panels only. So I might be a hypocrite. I really do like those things. I'm going to try to buy more of them before my viewers do because they will run out of stock. And just with the warranty alone and the rate of degradation, those are su supreme panels. I mean, for the cost of this, you can get a 400 watt bifacial solar panel, just to give you some perspective of how expensive this thing is. So yeah, if you want a large panel, the bifacial panel and the used 250 watts are good. If you want a small panel, I would go for the rich polycrystalline. As I said two years ago, as I said one year ago, I'm not changing that recommendation as, at all. But I would love to hear what you guys have to say. I think those test results were pretty straightforward and we're gonna have more testing in the future. But for an initial test with the new test station, I think that was pretty fun. So I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon, bye.